close your eyes and watch your breath. Keep your thoughts with the breath, keep your awareness with the breath, all the way in, all the way out. And if the mind starts wandering off, just bring it right back. It's like you have a fence around the mind. Your awareness, your mindfulness reminds you, okay, this is where you want to be. You don't want to be wandering off with your thoughts like the birds running all over the place. You want to be right here, focused right here. Because it's when the mind is focused that it develops strength, it develops power. It's like focusing the light of the sun. You can put a piece of paper out in the sunlight and it doesn't burn, but if you focus the rays on one spot using a magnifying glass, the paper will, will burn. So we're trying to develop some power to the mind here. And that requires that we have some restraint. We have to protect the mind from itself. Otherwise it can just destroy its power very easily. As the Buddha said, protection is not so much what you do from the outside as what you develop from the inside. King Basenia came to see him one time, and he finally came to a realization that if you have an army of all kinds, back in those days they, had, they called it a fourfold army, elephants, horses, infantry, artillery, their version of artillery, even then you're not really protected as long as you're not looking after yourself in the right way, you're not acting in skillful ways, because it's the power of your unskillful actions that leave you open to harm, whereas the power of your skillful actions acts as a protection. So how do you protect yourself? Well, it begins with virtue, like those precepts we took just now. You remind yourself, okay, there are certain forms of harm I am not going to do, and when you don't do those forms of harm, that harm is not going to come to you. The Buddha's image is of a hand carrying poison. He says if there's a wound in the hand, the poison can go into the hand easily. But if there's no wound, then the poison can't penetrate. In the same way, if you don't have any bad actions in your, in your present or your past, then Unfortunate things are not going to happen to you. They can happen around, but they don't come to you. So you have to look after your actions. Make sure that you exercise some restraint, not only in terms of the, pre the precepts we take just now. There are three other aspects of virtue the Buddha talked about. The first one is restraint of the senses. In other words, when you look at something, you ask yourself, why am I looking? Am I looking in a way that's going to give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion? Or greed, aversion, and delusion actually doing the looking right now? In other words, there are things that you look at because you want to give rise to more lust, give rise to more greed, rise to anger. Then, of course, that stokes the mind, stokes the fires in the mind. And so simply going through the day, you can put all kinds of things into the mind, and also be encouraging all kinds of unskillful qualities in the mind itself, allowing greed, allowing lust, allowing anger to do your looking and listening and everything else for you. And when the time comes to meditate, you've got this mind this, where you've been developing greed, developing anger, and your mindfulness and alertness just get weaker and weaker. So you protect yourself by looking at the way you look at things, look at the way you listen to things. Try to look with discernment, try to look with restraint. If you're looking at something that tends to give rise to, to greed, well, look at it in a way that get, gets rid of the greed. If you're looking at something that gives rise to lust, look at it in a way that gives rise that gets rid of the lust. Looking at something that gives rise to anger, and there's a lot of that right now, try to look at it in another way, so you're not stoking the fires of anger in the mind. Restraint of the senses doesn't mean you don't look. It means that you look selectively and you are very careful about how you look. Same with listening and all the other senses. So that's an aspect of virtue, too. Then there's the way you lead your life, the occupation you have, make, you want to make sure it's in right, line with right livelihood, and then you're used to the requisites. As the Buddha said, you should try to consider every day when you use something. Why are you using it? Why are you using food? Why are you using clothing, shelter? Why are you using your medicine? You use it in a way that's conducive to the practice. And when you think about the real reasons why we have food, clothing, shelter, and medicine, you begin to realize that you can do with a, just a little. You don't need an awful lot. You don't need to keep buying a lot more clothing. Or fixing up your house so that it's extra special, because the the money that goes into that requires you to work harder, and it also means that the money that could go to something better than that, a, a, a cause that would be better than that, just gets wasted away. So you want to look at how you use your requisites, and that way you protect yourself. If your house is full of all kinds of enticing things, well, it's going to entice people in. They don't come just to, to admire sometimes, they come to take. Whereas if there's nothing much that's enticing, okay, it's, it's a safe house. The same with your clothing, the same with all your 
consumption of things. Don't call attention to yourself by the way you consume things. That way you're safe. If you combine this with the other aspects of, of, of virtue, okay, you're safe all around. You're not creating any bad karma. You're not creating states of the mind that will tempt you to look past the, or over, override your precepts. And that way you're safe on all ways, safe all around.